In today's video, I'm going to show you how to hook up the headlights, taillights, work lights on a Ford Jubilee NAA and an 8N with the side mount distributor. There's a couple different switches you can get. You can get an on off, but this one has a, an off, a position one, and a position two. There's a bunch of different ways you can hook this up. You can have it so the first position, low beams, and then power back to your taillight. You can make it so the second position is high beams and then power back to your taillight, but that will require a separate switch for the work light. So the way we're going to wire this up today is so position one is high beams and position two is lights to the front and to the rear. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure the switch is off and I'm going to pull the key out and that way I know that the key switch is off and the terminal block in there will not be energized. If you've been following along with the restoration of this tractor, you'll remember that I put some disconnects on here so that I can unhook everything without cutting the wires up. I used the red and a brown. So the brown is ground and the red is 12 volts hot. Right now these two lights are just connected to each other. There's not power running back to the switch or to the battery. There's just two lights hooked into the side of the tractor with two wires hooking them together with disconnects to obviously take them apart if I need to. The 8N has the switch up here on the dashboard like this. The NAA slash Jubilee, we've got it down here on the side. This switch is a, a two position switch and the knob will unscrew and there's a nut and washer that you take off. So we're gonna show you how this hooks up and I'll, I'll do it on the outside like this and then we'll plug it all back into the side afterwards. Be really careful when you back these screws out. At least for me, once they fall on the floor, they go into the abyss never to be seen again. So just be careful of that and just realize that they will come out. I like to build all my own wiring harnesses custom for each tractor. I, I enjoy doing it. You can buy them, but they're pretty expensive, and I just really like building my own. The first wire I'm going to build is just a short power wire that's going to go from the terminal block, which will be the switch side of the terminal block, and I'll put one ring on the end of the switch, and you can see here this very end of the switch, there's one screw that kind of sticks out at the end of the fuse. I'm going to screw that down, and then the other end will later on go to the switched side of the terminal block. Some of you may be old enough to remember the days when car phones were installed pretty much permanently in cars, and for whatever reason, I kept all these extra pieces of wire that were always left over from every install. I have gobs and gobs and gobs of it, and you know, I'm 53 now, and I think I was 22 or something when I quit working, so you can do the math. So I'm going to use a little bit of this red wire here, and I'm going to use what we call a scotch lock connector. It basically allows you to splice one wire into another wire without really cutting anything. I'll show you how that works. The best tool for this really is a pair of slip joint pliers. And what's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to squish that little blade. There's a, there's a little blade in the middle here. And when that blade goes through, it's going to make electrical connection between the existing wire and the new wire that you're tailing onto it. There's two things you need to do when you use one of these scotch lock connectors. And one is you need to make sure that you clamp down straight. So you want to be perpendicular. You don't want to make that blade go off at an angle somewhere because you won't get a good connection. Second thing is you want to make sure that when you stick in your tail, your tail wire, you want to make sure you're holding it with your fingers and so you got that bottomed out in there because you want that clamp to come through and, and bite it. If you if you don't have it in all the way, you might you might miss. So here's the fork terminal right here that we're gonna use to connect to the light switch. And then here is the giant ring terminal that we're gonna use to connect the ground. And we're gonna go right on the battery with it. Some people hook it to the chassis and you know, that's fine. I just find that if you go right back to the negative terminal on the battery, you're 100% grounded. I like to teach to the lowest level when I do these videos. I know a lot of you do a lot of restorations and a lot of you are way more experienced than me, but a lot of you who watch, this is maybe your first restoration. So I just want to make sure that I cover all the details with this. I use these spring strippers here and it's really important that you, you bite it and you want to use the right gauge for the wire. So if you've got a 22 gauge wire, you want to strip it with the 22 gauge part, obviously. And then when you crimp it, you, I like to crimp it twice. In the military, we actually would double crimp everything, and it, it makes sure that you got a really good crimp. So just be careful when you crimp it that you, you bite it in good, because if you don't bite it just right, and then you pull on it a little bit, you'll you'll pull the tail right out of the crimp, and then you're, you gotta start all over again. So this wire came from the front, the two headlights, they're tied together, and we're just gonna tuck this down in here, just let it float for a minute. We're gonna make sure we don't wanna touch the battery or anything, but 
just kind of drop it down in and pre-measure it and make sure we're going to get it pretty much where we want to hook that switch into later. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hook the wires up and then I'm going to put the switch through. You just want to make sure that when you do this, you leave enough slack so that you can actually get it back through. You want to make sure you're not going to be hung up on stuff. You want to make sure you can still get the battery in and out, you know. But I just find that if I assemble this, not connected to the tractor, it's going to be a lot simpler. And you'll be able to follow along a lot better. So basically what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of measure how much we need. And, you know, if I've got a little bit of slack, we can tie wrap it into a, into a loop, a little maintenance loop. And that's and actually, if you've got this taken apart, you, it would be easier to put wind terminals on here now. It's just going to make it more difficult to troubleshoot later because now you've got a, a connection all the way through and you don't really have a good way to, to unhook this without taking these screws out and therefore maybe, maybe losing them. I like to use terminals that have like some heat shrink on them so once you've made your mechanical connection, you go ahead and just heat it with a heat gun and that'll melt the heat shrink down so it just looks cleaner. So just to rehash that on this switch, there's two terminals here that are connected together electrically. It doesn't matter which one of these screws you connect it to because they're both the same. My goal here was not to buy any lights. I had this tail lamp just sitting on the shelf and then I had this Napa plow light here. The difference between these two lights is that the tail lamp has a, a ground wire and a hot wire whereas the Napa work lamp only has one power lead. The ground is actually on the, the bolt that goes through the bracket. In order to make this work, what I'm gonna do is run a ground back from the battery, and then I'm gonna hook the ground to the tail lamp and then take a T off the tail lamp and run that to the post. So you can get these little clips, and these are the original style, and these will match up with the bolts for the transmission and everywhere else. They are a little bit pricey, and especially if you have to have a half a dozen or so minimum, you know, with shipping. It's going to run you a couple bucks. I just have this one here just to kind of show you. But I'm going to show you, a, you know, a different way to connect all these things without having to spend a bunch of money. What I'm going to do next before I tie anything together is I'm going to carefully run the wire from the front to the back. And what you want to do is you want to go in behind everything as much as possible. And then make sure you're not going to get it in any pinch points or any places where the wire is going to get fetched up on something. In a separate video, we attach these lights that I picked up on Amazon for 50 bucks a set. There's three wires per light, a, a ground, a low beam, and a high beam. But I don't have enough switch positions to operate all those. So I taped off the low beam, and then here you see with a blade terminal and a sleeve, they're connected side to side, and that way I don't have to cut anything need to, if I need to take something out. The next thing I did is I took a hot wire and I spliced it into the hot wires for the lights and then I took and did the same with the ground and then I covered it in a wire loom and when you put these tapes on you want to leave yourself a friend so basically wrap the tape around and then fold it back on itself so you have a tab to pull it off if you need to disconnect the tape later on. Next thing we do is we go from the switched position of the terminal block which will be the side of the terminal block that has juice when the key switch is turned on. You're going to make a little stub wire that's going to come out of that and that's going to go into the end of your light switch where the fuse is. There's one little screw at the end of the fuse. You're going to hook it there. Your headlight wire is going to be connected to one of these two screws that has a piece of metal that connects both of them. It doesn't matter which one you use, but that's going to be your headlight wire. So you're going to run that up to the hut on your front that I just showed you. And when I wire up my, my lights, I always want to make sure that my ground is connected to the ground. And that could be, if it's positive ground, you want to hook it to the positive terminal. This is a 12 volt negative ground. So I've got my ground wire coming here to this. And what I've got is I've actually got two grounds here. I've got this one here goes to the front headlights. And then this one here, I ran a separate ground wire all the way back through, which you can see here. So the orange is hot and the brown is ground. And you kind of want to make sure when you wire these up, and it's just because the wire is a little fluey there, but I like to make it so you can take your finger and just go right along. And you can always trace your wires out. Transmission case, there is a hole. That's where the wire goes through. And that comes along here. I ran it up under the seat, through here, down, hooked it to the brake rod, up the other side. And this fender, these fenders on these, you can, you can disassemble them. So you've got 
they're, they're like a two-piece fender. You've got like the shell itself, and then you've got the, the bracket that kind of holds it on. So I ran the wires in behind, disconnected the fender, ran the wires in behind. So they came up and I tie wrapped everything together there from here to the fender bracket, and then right up the side here, and then through there like that. You want to make sure that you don't have wires hanging out in case you got tire chains or something on you. There should be a hole pre-drilled for your fenders. I didn't have the brackets for these, but I, I bought them as a pair just because it was cheaper to buy them as a pair instead of a single ground comes up. And then I've got another ground attached here because this light, the ground for this light here, this plow light is actually the post, which is the bolt that goes through here. And if you think about it, this tractor's negative ground. So somewhere in this tractor, the ground terminal is attached, is attached to metal. Between this bracket and wherever the ground terminal is on that tractor, there's a whole bunch of different metals made it together through a bunch of different bolts. And it's a good way to have a lot of interference as far as a path of current to go to ground. So the best way to avoid any issues with paint or rust or anything is to run a separate ground so that that ground comes here and connects to the post of this light. This right here is the tail light and it has its own ground so I just splice that into the ground here. I pull the light switch to the second position which energizes this wire here to the back. I'm going to have power to this and this so if I'm going down the road you don't really want your tail light and your spotlight or your work light both on together because you're going to be shining people behind you or it looks funny. It's not really what you're supposed to do. So these plow lights don't come with a switch. So you have to put a switch on. So the switch is here. This tractor already had some kind of bracket here. And so all I did was just widened up the hole, put a toggle switch on. And so on, off, if I put the lights on. Back here right now, I'll only have the tail light. If I put this on, I'll have the tail light and the work light. And you kind of want to make sure your wires are off to the side and tucked away as best you can because you don't want sticks and branches or whatever hooked to it if you're using it for that. This tractor is pretty much just a, a ride around tractor. It's not going to see much work. So not to worry about sticks and branches, but just keep that in mind when you're wiring up stuff. Put our keys back in. And we're going to turn this to the on position. You don't want to leave your switch on too long because you'll burn the points out. All right, second position power to the back my tail lights on and now I'll put this toggle switch on and I've got power to that off just the tail light again all done for the day and I forgot whatever shut the tractor off left the headlights on off and you're not going to deplete your battery you always want to make sure that your headlights are hooked to the switched power and not the constant so I hope this has been helpful I'm going to draw a little diagram here and show you how the wires go. Like I said, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat, but eventually they're all going to end up doing pretty much the same thing. And like I said, some people don't have the tail lights or the, the work lights, so it makes it a little bit simpler. But if you want that, and I didn't want to buy work lights from aftermarket because I hate them and they're really expensive. So I just used stuff I had kicking around the shop. I bought absolutely nothing for this project. I already had the headlights and I already had the, the light switch. So as far as hooking up the taillights, I bought absolutely nothing. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, put them down below. I always look at them and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. appreciate you watching and I'll talk to you next time.